Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Rodent Replies, the series on my channel where I answer your questions about rats and mice. So for today's video I wanted to answer the question of how do you pick a good rat breeder? So if you're familiar with the videos on my channel you'll know that I absolutely advise against getting rats or any other small animal from pet stores, especially chain pet stores. It's not fair on you, you're not going to get a friendly animal straight off the bat and you're also likely to get a very sick animal. It's also not fair on the rats or any other small animals that you're buying from pet stores because of the conditions they're bred in and the conditions that these animals have to live in. It's really not fair to be giving money over to that industry. But I do have a video where I talk more in depth about this subject, specifically rats and whether you should get them from pet stores, a rescue or from a breeder in the iCards and also in the description below. So I really don't advise you get any animals from pet stores. The best thing to do is see if there's a rescue in your area that has any rats or if anyone is rehoming them on something like Craigslist. For whatever reason they can't keep their rats anymore, see if you can acquire rats that way. Or an equally good option, especially if you're a first time rat owner, is to go to a reputable breeder. So what are some of the benefits of going to a good rat breeder? So your rats should be coming from a really good environment, being fed a good diet, they should also have a good temperament both by selectively breeding for them to have this and also because the breeder should be taming them for you before you even bring them home. A breeder should also be there to answer any questions that you have and give you advice not only before you bring your rats home but throughout your rats entire life. A good breeder will also offer to take your rats back if for whatever reason your circumstances change and you're not able to keep them you should always contact your breeder and see if they're able to take them back or know anyone that wants to give them a good home because a good breeder will always want to know what's going on with their rats and will always want them to have the best life possible. So getting rats from a breeder is a really sensible option, but not all breeders are good. Now not all breeders are equal, not all breeders are reputable. Some are what you can call a backyard breeder, which in this case getting rats from them can sometimes be as bad as going to a pet store. So in today's video I thought I'd talk you through some of the warning signs to look out for if you're thinking about getting rats and trying to find a good breeder. Now if someone does just one of these, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a backyard breeder or a bad breeder. But also if someone doesn't fit every single one of these, that also doesn't mean that they're not a bad breeder. Does that make sense? So I would try to look out for if someone fits a couple of these and just use your better judgement against whether you should be getting rats from them or not. And my rats are being very loud right now. So one thing that I have personally noticed when browsing selling sites looking for any rats that need homes is people that are breeding rats and selling them have them in the picture and they have rats of a lot of different ages in the picture from newborn rats up to rats that are about four weeks old all mixed in in the one picture and this is just a warning sign to me rats should be kept in their own maternity cages with the same age babies so this is just a little bit off to me and if you see this then I'd ask the breeder a lot of questions just to check that they are a good breeder or not but this is one of the things that I've noticed another thing that I've noticed when scrolling through selling sites is that many of the rats are in tubs on shavings now some of these people may be just putting them in the tubs for ease of photos but you can never be too safe when it comes to shavings even though they may be kiln dried and dust extracted so technically safe when I see shavings in photos I immediately think of the rats getting respiratory infections so that to me is a warning sign even though they may be using shavings that are technically safe um, I would be careful if you see people housing rats on inappropriate bedding that are claiming to be breeders. Another warning sign is that a breeder will home out only one rat even if they know that you have other rats, it's really important for rats to have same age friends so I'd always recommend going to a breeder that insists on housing out rats in pairs because it's really beneficial to your rats to have rats that are the same age to interact with so I'd be wary of anyone that either homes out one rat knowing that you have other rats or just homes out one rat not even caring if you have pre-existing rats or not. I'd also be wary of anyone that is selling their rats and letting them go to homes before six or seven weeks most breeders that I know will keep them until about eight weeks before they let you have them and this is just so they can monitor the rat's development and I'd say that anyone that's homing them out, especially before six weeks, is probably just doing it for profit and doesn't actually care about the rat's well-being. Another thing that I would say is probably a warning sign is if they're charging more for rats of different varieties, so different ear shapes, fur types, patterns, things like that. If they're charging more than this is kind of a warning sign because Rats at the end of the day all cost exactly the same to raise and this is probably just a warning sign that they're doing it for profit rather than the love of the rats by charging more for rarer varieties even though most of these aren't really that rare these days. A big warning sign to me is any breeder that homes out a rat that is sneezy or wheezing or has excessive porphyrin around their eyes and their nose. A good breeder won't home out a rat that is sick, they'll hold on to it and treat it themselves until letting it go to a new home. Anyone that does home out sick rats is definitely someone to 
avoid at all costs. Another thing that is definitely something you should be careful of and something you may not notice if you're new with wraps and don't really understand different wrap terms is someone that uses the wrong names for certain varieties so they may say I have some fancy wraps and some jumbo wraps for sale but fancy wraps is kind of the umbrella term for all domesticated wraps and under that you have top eared wraps and jumbo wraps but they may call top eared wraps fancy wraps and another example is that they may be selling Siamese rats as cream rats or selling Russian blue rats as grey rats. To me this is really dodgy because a good rat breeder will understand the names of the different types of rats they are breeding and to me it's really crucial because they need to understand the genetics behind the varieties they're breeding. If they don't even know the technical terms for these varieties then I really don't know what they're doing and they probably don't either. Another big no-no is going to a breeder and they won't tell you where they got their starting rats from or the rats that they are breeding from. A good breeder will be happy to discuss their lines with you and where they got their starting rats from or especially if they say that they're breeding rats that they got from a pet store or they're breeding rats that they got as rescues. You just don't know the genetic history of these rats and it's really dangerous to be breeding them without knowing what kind of illnesses they're genetically predisposed to so avoid anyone that is breeding from pet shop rats or rats that are rescues because this is just all around a terrible idea. I would also avoid anyone that is very clearly also breeding rats for snake food. This goes without saying really, I'm not a snake hater, I like snakes, snakes need to eat, but I just wouldn't recommend getting rats from anyone that is breeding them for food because they're probably not focusing on temperament and health so I would just avoid that if I was you. Something else that comes across as a warning sign to me is someone that won't show you their parent rats of the rats that you're buying or won't show you their rat room or if you do go in and see their rat room, if the rats are in really cramped cages and dirty cages then this is a definite warning sign to me just because a breeder needs a lot of rats to start breeding and have a rattery does not mean that their rats need to live in conditions that are less than what they deserve so definitely Take that into consideration if you're going to someone's house to look at their rats, look at the surroundings and look at the cages that they're housing their rats in. Are they really small and cramped with no enrichment and are they really dirty and filthy? This is probably not someone that you want to get rats from. If you do go to a breeder's house and you just get a little bit of an off feeling, it is okay to say no and to walk away. I know it's really hard and it's really difficult once you're there. It's kind of awkward, I have been in this position myself, but it is okay to say no if you're just feeling that something is off and you don't want rats from them. I know many of you may not have a reptile breeder in your area, but please I urge you do not go to a backyard breeder just because they are closer. It really is worth travelling a little bit extra to get your rats from a reptile breeder and if you can't travel that much then there are other alternatives such as meeting them at a rat show or meeting them halfway or contacting other rat lovers that may be able to help get your rat to you by transporting them for you. A really good place to start if you are thinking of getting rats from a breeder is to join local forums and Facebook groups for rats in your area and see what other people recommend in terms of breeders and you can also find the breeders Facebook pages. Most people will have their own separate Facebook pages for their rattery and their breeding so you can also find these through things like Facebook. Most reptile breeders will be a part of your country's rat club so it's worth also looking there for a list of breeders that they recommend and they're a part of their society. But this does not mean that every single breeder on that list is a good breeder and it also does not mean that anyone that isn't on that list is necessarily a bad breeder. There may be many reasons why someone is not a member of the club or society and they may also be working themselves up to being able to join. So yeah, keep that in mind. There's nothing that really regulates these clubs for them to be a breeder on the list so they don't go around and check everyone's houses and make sure they're breeding their rats correctly and they don't really have to necessarily do anything massive to join and become a reputable breeder on these lists. They just have to be a member of the society for a couple of years I think and then they can join and register as a breeder so it's not really a technical process, it's just um, more so a list of what other people recommend. One thing to note is that a reputable breeder will have a waiting list and this can sometimes be quite a long wait, sometimes it can be about a six month wait from when you join the list to when you're actually getting the babies. And this is just because the breeders don't breed for supply and demand, they're breeding to work on their line so any other babies that they have then you'll have to wait to get them. But honestly it is worth the wait and you should be planning ahead to get rats anyway instead of just going out and getting rats so it really isn't that much of a problem. 
And if you can't find a reptile breeder in your area, then maybe just don't get rats. I keep looking in your local area for any rats that do come up that need homes, but really it is not worth rushing into and getting unfriendly or unhealthy rats just because you couldn't wait or you couldn't find a really good breeder. So I really hope this was helpful in picking out a breeder and knowing what things to look out for when picking a rat breeder if you are thinking about getting rats or you're thinking about adding more rats into your family. If you have anything else to add and any other warning signs you think people should look out for when getting rats and breeders, definitely leave them down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to leave me any other suggestions for future rent replies where I answer your questions about rats and mice in the comments. It's really helpful to me to know what you guys want to see in a video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to see more animal related videos from me, and we'll see you in our next video.